Hello again and welcome back to New Ideas. This time not a review as such, but my experience upgrading my old PC. I thought it was time, especially as recently with the Spectre and Meltdown issues, together with the fact I'm doing a lot more video editing, things have been slowing down. So the question was, buy new complete system or upgrade my old one? This is the old one, dusty, messy and first generation i5 about 9 years old. The case has a broken USB socket, so that has to go. It was slightly cheaper to upgrade, and I really like building PCs, but I haven't done so for about six years, and there are lots of changes. But which components do I buy? Well, naturally, I turned to YouTube, of course. After many hours spent watching various videos, I came to the following decisions. First of all, the motherboard. RGB was not that important, and SLI support was a bonus and I wanted USB 3.1 and a header to support 10 gigabits per second. I might be doing a mild overclock and the budget was about 150 pounds. This fitted the bill, especially as I managed to get a really good deal bundled with a processor. So on to that. It's a Ryzen 1700X. Great for multitasking and didn't suffer from the Spectre bug, unlike the higher clocked Intel alternatives. And as I said, it was a great price. 300 pounds combined with a motherboard, although I did have to buy a cooler. I went for the Be Quiet Pure Rock, but I may upgrade this in the future. As for the RAM, 16GB DDR4 3000 was what I went for. Prices are mad at the moment, but I couldn't wait. As for a graphics card, well, card prices are just bonkers. I went for 1070 Ti. This was the cheapest one available at the time, and I got it before the prices went stratospheric. What did I reuse? Well, for SSD, a SanDisk Extreme 120GB. This has my OS on it. Was it going to work swapping motherboard and processor? I heard good and bad stories, but I did image this on the old system before I started. Then my 3.5 inch hard disks, a WD Green 2TB and a Samsung 1.5TB. I managed to reuse my old Corsair 620 power supply. It's old but I've never had a problem with it and on paper it shouldn't be an issue and it's semi-modular. And lastly, a bit of a dinosaur but still works well an LG Super Multi Blue Drive. With that out of the way, let's get started. First off, the motherboard. Not much in this box. SATA cables, IO shield, SLI bridge, M2 drive riser and screw and motherboard header thingy. The manuals, drivers, etc. and money off cable mod cables. I haven't used this code, so the first person to grab it is welcome to it. Now let's take the board out. It's a nice black silver grey colour scheme. Let's mount the processor now. Line up the arrow on the socket with the gold arrow on the processor. But be careful when handling the CPU. Only by the edges. Let it drop in. And secure with this lever. Now to fit the cooler. Easily in the top five of the most fiddly jobs mainly down to the way it mounts. Also, be sure not to accidentally brush against the base as it has pre-installed thermal material here. The fan is easy to clip in and just attach the fan header. There's only one used here even though the motherboard has support for two. Now insert the memory into the like colored slots. Here the CPU heatsink is slightly blocking the first slot, so I'm using slots two and four. Then I decided to get full advantage of this motherboard, I'd need an NVMe drive. So here's a 250GB Samsung EVO, fairly easy to fit, doing this before mounting the cooler would have been easier. Now to insert the motherboard into the case, make sure you insert the IO shield first though. As for the case, I decided eventually on the Fractal Design R6. There's 8 screws to put in and do up, and it has to be perfectly aligned. A couple of the screws were proving problematic here as they were just fractionally out. Now for the most fiddly job I think, the power supply and associated cabling. We have a whole mess and mass of cables here, 24 pin ATX, 8 pin graphics and 8 pin EPS, as well as the SATA power cables. I'm just removing the drive trays here in the background as I don't need them. Not in this place anyway. I'm not showing it here, but I did fit both the 3.5 inch drives and the SSD. The USB 
USB 3 cable here is particularly thick and I think the header would have been better on the right hand side near the SATA sockets. A couple of things have changed over the years with PC building. Most noticeable for me have been the obsession with good cable routing and the RGB thing. I can see the merits of both, but for me the RGB thing especially is not important. I did end up buying extension cables for my power supply though, I like the white look. Getting all the cables routed neatly without bending the pins on the motherboard requires a bit of patience, something I usually don't have. Just work, will you? Although the Asus multi-connector thing does make life a bit easier. And now to fit the graphics card, this is the really easy bit. Slot the card in and then just screw down the graphics card. And connect the power to it. And that's it. So now to turn it on and you can see the RGB traces here on the left hand side. Not something I was really interested in, but the motherboard came with it as standard. I may add RGB to the case at some point in the future. And the big question, did it work? Well, yes it did, surprisingly actually. There were no issues swapping out the Intel processor for the AMD. It booted into Windows first time. Although, there is an issue with the Windows 10 activation. I don't have the original Windows 7 disks and this was a free upgrade from Windows 7, but I'll live with that for the moment. I think the Fractal Design R6 case works really well and it looks really smart with a white, black, silver color scheme. Thanks for watching. See you next time.